<laughs> yes, and we're live, people. Welcome back to the THFC show. Back with myself, who had my guy tapping Tobes as well. Listen, three weeks in a row, brother. This is a little bit of a recurring theme now. I'm, I'm liking this, you know what I mean? That we said we're going to try to be a little bit more consistent this year, so... Today, Monday, of course, a little bit different, but listen, we appreciate you taking the time to join us, regardless whether you're coming live now or whether you're watching this later. Listen, get involved in the conversation as well. Throw your chats in. doesn't just have to be super chats if it's relating to the conversation, topic at hand, some good questions. We'll throw them up regardless, so just make sure you're getting involved in the conversation. If you're liking the combo, like the stream as well. Appreciate the algorithms. And support us, of course, man. Subscribe to the channel. Both the links are in the description. Do you know what I mean? Uh, Tobes' channel was there as well. I don't know what his next target is. 15K, I'm assuming, or 20K. 15. Brother, my thing is 10K. I've just surpassed the 5K thing. Just warming back in this season. So support us where we can. And do you know what I mean? That will entice us to make more streams, of course, as, as the season goes along. We ain't just going to be here for the good times. Trust me, because we've been here for plenty of bad ones, you know what I mean? But without further ado, bro, let's let's get into this week because, listen, Bournemouth nil, Spurs 2, and uh, it's back-to-back wins, bro. Kind of a little bit unfamiliar for us, a little bit while. Um, first away win of the season already as well. I think now, what, unbeaten in the first three games as well. What's your yeah. kind of uh, feeling after that game? Or shall I, let's even go before that. What was your feeling kind of going into that game? Obviously, following the United win last week, which... I think both of us were on here the week before that game saying, Do you know what? We kind of expect to win that game. Expected us to kind of play we did. I think the performance, obviously, game of two halves, but walked away from that game all in all very, very content. Coming into this, what's your kind of feeling? Second away game of the season. You saw what we played like at the G Tech. Are you expecting the same? I was just expecting us to win, man. Um, and it wasn't a slight against Bournemouth because I know, obviously, they got the new manager, um, Ariola, obviously, he comes with a Basque learning and they're not playing the exact same way they played last year. Um, they're playing a lot more, they're playing a more expansive style, higher pressing game, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But for me, it was all about continuing the momentum, right? Like we spoke on yeah. last week, getting as many points as possible before before we get into that sticky period for us. Um, after the international break, where we go to go away to Arsenal, where we then play Liverpool at home and so on and so forth, mm-hmm. right? So um, for me, it was just get the three points. Honestly, get the three points. Like the performances have been impressive so far. I would have liked to. I was hoping to see some uh, some more impressive performances, but most importantly, in addition to the win, I wanted to see the attack step up, right? Because that's the only part of the pitch where I'm still having negatives right and there are still negatives with the attack after the third game but that's the only part of the team where I'm like give me something right so win yeah. and I want to see the attack get on the score sheet what was your kind of thoughts on on the game as a whole then because personally going as you said going into the game feeling pretty confident I'm expecting a win as well I said I'm not normally this confident going into Spurs games but for some reason this season the way we've kind of played um, the belief kind of under this kind of new manager, if you like. I think the United game, I was like, it's our first home game. So I'm really expecting us to kind of set a benchmark for the season in our home fixtures. I think this one, the second away game, I'm looking at Bournemouth and I'm thinking, I, I expected them to, I've, I said I had them this season, if anything, as kind of like my overachievers. I think a lot of their signings have been kind of underrated. I think they've got talent in their squad, so they could give us some trouble. But seeing the way we went up against Brentford, I'm thinking... Bournemouth still ain't really figured it out just yet. I think we can probably get them now, and now is probably a good time to play them there. And the way they came, they got injuries as well. They got injuries as well. Sorry to interrupt. They got no, injuries. No, no, no. no, you're right. They, they do have injuries to, to, yeah. to big players as well. So exactly. you've got to kind of take advantage of that. But I thought almost we literally did. But what was your kind of thoughts on like the first half, if you like? Impressed, man. I was really impressed with, with our first half. I thought we were able to navigate Bournemouth's high press quite well. I thought we started putting our foot behind the ball and actually playing good football. Madison, seeing him get involved across all phases of play was 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 a delight, man. And it's just, I know it's only three games in, man. I know we'll talk about Madison more, but just seeing him dispel so many of these nonsense rumours that um, pe- casuals were, were saying about Madison over the years. Oh, he's a soft touch. Oh, he doesn't work hard. Oh, he can't get involved in 
in the first or second phase of play, he's a liability. He loses possession. All of this rubbish, right? So he was a big part of what we did in the first half. But I was impressed, man. We played some good stuff in the first half. Um, I really liked how, like, Bournemouth, even though they were pre- playing a higher pressing game, it was dangerous for them because they couldn't really, like, if you try and press Basuma, you're, you're, you're dead. Literally, you're dead. If you try and press Madison, you're dead. You're li- You're dead. Pedro Porro, some, he, he he didn't really put a foot wrong as well. Like, it was just a really impressive first half, man. Destiny just, oh, Lord, man, what can I say about that kid? Um, it was it was a good first half. I went into that first half and I wasn't angry about about, about the performance. I was like, we look good. My only, my, only, um, my only disappointment here is it's only 1-0. We should be winning by more. That was yeah. the only negative I had about the first half. Literally, I couldn't I couldn't agree more. And now I think the biggest takeaway for me was the confidence I think we were playing with. That for me was I think as you said there, Bournemouth almost played into our hands. I think one of the comments said that as well. It was like their high press. Okay, cool. You want to do that? Pop it into Basuma's feet and these little cute turns. This guy, these short, sharp turns, he's able to do with just one touch, body thing, gone. And I'm just like, mate, this just completely allows us this first phase to play out. And I think that confidence in the passing, the confidence in the pressing, the confidence in like some of the jewels even, I'm like, I actually have belief in every man in this kind of lineup to to win their mm-hmm. duel, to get their passes off, that when the pass does come in, they will take the right touch to get it out. And I'm like, yo, this is what I've been wanting to see. And the fact that I'm seeing this away from home, honestly, I was tweeting kind of throughout the first half. I was like, mate, this is one of the best first half performances. I was like, wow. And you've rocked my world here, brother. Because as Spurs fans, bro, and this is the thing, everyone's like, why are you lot so excited? And I'm like, bro, do you know how starved we've been? Do you know what? And you know me, bro. I've always said I'm not the um, pretty football aficionado. I'm not the, hey, man, let's, for me, it's always just, listen, are you getting results? Can we play the right way? Playing the right way is almost like a bonus, if you like. But for yeah. me, it's like the fact that, a manager is able to come in, lay out these kind of instructions, and you can see what the what the kind of plan is. You can see, listen, play out the back no matter what. Vicario, I don't care if it's right foot or left foot. There was two or three times where I saw the ball come into his left foot, and he actually found a good pass of his weak foot. I'm like, hey, what foot is this, brother? So for me, it's that oh, cool. That's Yeah, and that's the confidence I'm saying in you have to be able to allow your players even to say, listen, I don't care if you make the mistake, keep doing it. There was a moment where... Um, Kulu, I remember, he went in for a 50-50, kind of pulled out. You could see and on the touchline screaming. And I'm like, yeah, it don't matter who you are, star player, best player, good with your feet. I need 100 in everything. I need confidence in everything you do. And I think that was, for me, the first half where I was just like, yo, you know what? Even though we're going in 1-0, as you said, I think Richarlison with that chance, had he buried that, I think it's nice the game almost. But low-key, I'm not going to lie to you, it, I think sometimes when you go in 2-0, it makes it a dangerous scoreline. So I was thinking, you know, 1-0, this means now we have to raise the level. And I've been like, all right, this is the level now uh, away from home in the first half. I wonder, I wonder if Ange has got it in him to rattle this team up to say, yo, find another gear. Because I don't know, previous years, could you confidently have said, yeah, you can back this team to come out in the second half and not throw away that result? Um, It's weird because last <laughs> Last season we were a second half team. Last season it was more a case of we stinking yeah. of yeah, yeah we stinking the first half and oh let's try and give it a go in the second half and we'd have to do the rescue job thing. But the reason why you couldn't really back the team to actually like be stable in recent in recent months is because of the defense and because of the way we were in possession. We were so careless with the ball, we didn't really have an appetite to control games, and then on top of that, we had individuals who are just making crazy, crazy mistakes that would shoot us in the back foot all over the pitch, right? So now, second half with Ange, I feel like you're right. He's given, he's given, and he is still giving these guys a platform to play, right? Obviously, on the touchline, he's quite, like, talkative. He's screaming at players, yo, do this, do that, etc., etc. But Fundamentally, he's given everyone a platform to do what they need to do, be more expressive on the ball. And I also feel like 
we've been able to increase the technical base of this team. This is the one thing that me and you, we've been banging on about for years now. Increasing the technical base of this team is absolutely paramount to Spurs being able to control games of football better. You mentioned Vicario, who I thought had a really good game on, on Boom, uh, against Bournemouth. And people say, people might ask, oh, why? He didn't really have to make like lots and lots of saves. But it's more about a really good game in comparison to what we had in Lloris in his last season. Someone who's so calm and, and, and measured on the ball. Even if all the passes weren't accurate, the fact that he doesn't get flustered, he's not just hoofing the ball. And if he hoofs it, it's not like he's hoofing it straight to the opposition. He's getting some range on, on that kick and he's finding one of the attackers on the on the in the opposition's half and he's able to use both feet, which helps when he's being pressed. When opposition are, when the opposition are converging on him, he he's like, oh, right, you want to shut out my you want to shut out my my option to pass him in my right foot. Fine, I'll just use my left foot. Do you get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So yeah, it it was it was really good, and, and I felt like um, another thing I I really liked in the second half was the fact that we did face some adversity and we rode through it because I felt there was a good, I would say, ten minute spell in the second half where. I felt Bournemouth were in the ascendancy. I felt like we were getting a little bit sloppy with the ball. I felt like players like Papi Matasar might have been t getting tired. Um, I think Basuma was caught in possession maybe like once or twice by Semenyo, who I thought was their best player. Um, and they were growing in confidence. And in in months gone by, one of my what was the, one of my biggest pet hates with Conte, like your change, oh. your substitutions oh, are just. I was going to say there, just um, with Ange, that's now probably two big games where I've seen those kind of substitutions where he's kind of read the game well. Because I think, yeah, second half, when we came out, it almost felt like the first, what, 10, 15 minutes, the game started to open up a bit. And I think that's us going, obviously, for the kill to get that second. But then I think Bournemouth, just before the half, they had, um, was it Billing, who just missed with a shot in the episode. So, yeah. Yeah. immediately woke up the home crowd. They come out second half. I think it was Semenyo. Similarly, edge of the box, just misses. You're thinking, all right, are these not starting to work? And the game, all of a sudden, you just start, saw it. Midfield just had this 20, 30-yard gap between themselves, the defence, and the front line. You're thinking, yo. But that's where the substitutions, I fully agree. I felt like yeah. they actually made the positive difference. Hoiberg, when he came on, I know so many times last season, we said, this guy's cagey on the ball, da, da, da. But, the, besides the passion and desire, he came in and brought just a level of calmness. Perisic, similarly, I think for the for the second goal, was it? He actually started the little build-up play with Udogi on the wing before he goes down the touchline. So, fully agree. But that's back-to-back -back games. Do you give massive credit to Posokoglu for that? And, Absolutely. And that? Absolutely, bro. Absolutely. And that was... um. That's one of the things that we've we've unfortunately not seen enough of over the last year or so with Conte. Even when Conte was doing well, the problem with Conte is always was always your subs. Like Conte is the type of manager, like his his plan A is his plan A and never wants to deviate from his plan A, even when you can see that players are shagging, right? So for me, it was it was good that Ange Postacoglu recognized danger, recognized that the game's getting away, and most importantly, was able to to call upon players that have been linked with moves away or players that are on the periphery of the club and get them buying into the idea that they can come on and they can make an impact. So of course yeah. I have to give him I have to give him credit for that man. Honestly, like so far, so far so good, man. He's been he's been a breath of fresh air, man. Honestly, like um I'm so happy to be wrong about like him being able to translate some of his ideologies and, and his ideology and methods to the Prem from SPFL, because that was my biggest worry. Like nothing against you as a manager. Like I, I respect what you've done before, but it's hard to gauge, right? When you're managing the big two, it's hard to gauge. But this guy, honestly, I keep, as games go by, whether we win, lose or draw, like just the way he approaches his job at Spurs, it's, it's the best, man. It, it really and, is. And, 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 I, and listen, I think many people can kind of understand the, the scepticism or the kind of the side eye, if you like, early on. Because, listen, this is a club that hasn't historically, over the past four or five years, made the best decisions when it comes to managers, made the best decisions when it comes to signing. The fans have been kind of almost scarred, if you like, from what, next decision is this club going to make? So having gone the complete 180 of the Jose Conte type managers to go in almost back to, if you like, the Redknapp Pochettino style manager, 
fair enough. Let's let's see yeah. kind of where it plays out. But as yeah. you said, it's been a breath of fresh air. And I think almost like I feel like the two both the goals in that game as well were kind of a reminiscent of what you're seeing with this kind of Spurs this season. You look at you touched on there in the first half with kind of the midfield, the technical security within this team now, all throughout the team. But you saw it in that first goal. Poro out wide. Before that was Emerson. How many times would he have fumbled possession out there? Simple one two there into Basuma. Basuma there pops it into Saar. Saar able to find that pass. Are you telling me Hoiberg and Skip last season would have been able to find that pass and do that one two? They're not doing that. Hoiberg is not even going to be in the position that Saar was in. And you have to give massive credit to Saar for finding that pass as well. Absolute brilliant final weight of ball as well. But in Madison to make that run as well, I'm like, listen, we almost have a midfield that is wants to play this type of way that I'm just playing, if that makes sense. So it's a it's a perfect fit almost, you feel like. And then the second goal, you look at it, as you said, Perisic comes on as a substitute, links up your doggy there, one, two on the wing. Son, who we'll, we'll touch on individuals very shortly as well, but he played very well in that game. Beautiful link up there. And then Kulusevsky, who I've said, listen, do not sell your stocks. I've said all season. And people might say, listen, it's just a goal or whatever. But sometimes you just need that something to break the seal, if you like. And I just felt like this could be almost like the, the confidence giver for the rest of the season, if you like. I, I hope it is anyway. Yeah, that's that that's that that's the hope, isn't it? Right. But yeah, that that was that was one of the things that uh, I've seen over the over the course of all the games we've played that like there are multiple entries for Spurs to actually score, right? It's not just, oh, set piece or put, swing across into the box for someone to get ahead of. Like, there are multiple ways for, for Tottenham to now start manufacturing chances. Like you said in the first goal, it was a combination of our entire midfield three and our midfield three all doing three different things that we want all of our midfielders to do. You had the number six beating the press and driving with the ball forward. You had... A number eight receiving the ball with his back to goal and then turning and poking a, a, a through ball through to the left number eight, who's made a run into the box to score. Like you've got characteristics of everything that Ange Postacoglu is looking for in our midfield there in one move. And in the second goal, like you said, you've got three players combining. Right. One who had just come off, come on the pitch, maybe like five or six minutes before that. The other who was a left winger who then moved into the middle and the other who's a left back. And it made no difference. Like They were still able to, to gel and make the goal happen. And then again, oh. with the runs into the box, you've got a right winger who has predominantly had to be the playmaker for the side, attacking the box, attacking the, the attacking um, areas of the goal that he didn't really attack before. So for me, it's it's positive signs, man. It's positive signs. Seeing Kulisevsky make that type of run, that's what you want because that signifies that signifies a player who the manager obviously wants to get more goals and you'll see Sun make those runs on the left hand side when balls are being played from the right hand side right yeah. um you saw even with the other chances we created I remember there was another good move in the first half where pa the ball fell to Papi Matasar inside the box and I think he poked he poked it he should have really hit it first time you had the the slight that your your traditional playmaking from Madison where he spun someone in the centre part of the pitch, drove into the heart, played a through ball to Richarlison, really should have scored. Then you got your obvious set piece in the second half. So there's multiple ways we can try and create chances now. It's just a case of sticking the ball into the back of the net. Like, I feel like as far as starts are concerned, like this is a really good start from Ange Postacoglu. Like he's given me, he's given me no reason to, to criticise him. He's given me no reason to... To, to look at his his time so far negatively. Obviously, there's going to be more tests to come. Mm -hmm. I don't really want to get carried away, right? We still, as I said, we still got some big fixtures oh, coming up. No, no I, I fully agree. Well, listen, it's not a matter of getting carried away. It's just the results have been good. And we've been talking about those said results. You know what I mean? There will yeah. come moments when things aren't bad. And trust me, one thing we'll do is we'll, we'll say what those things are if and when yeah. we see them. But, yeah, for me, I remember last year when we were doing the show, we always had um the Conte meter, if you like. After yeah. every game, we kind of give him a rating on his tactics, if you like, his substitutions, his in-game management, if you like, uh -huh. and and his overall game plan. What, what would you, I don't know what we're gonna call this one the 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 post the post meter the the post the cog meter uh, um, the meter I don't know. <laughs> um, 
but, but when, when Andromeda, Andromeda? Andromeda can run. I don't mind Andromeda. Posta <laughs> cock meter, I was thinking, maybe. Posta what? <laughs> about sound too. Posta cock meter. I'm like, yo, no, hey. That's crazy, bro. <laughs> and I don't even do the pause thing. That is crazy. <laughs> That is crazy, bro. Let me show. Let me show. Let me show. Andrew, 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 For the Andrew meter uh, for this game against um, oh, Andrew Anonymous. Oh, I quite like that one. You know. <laughs> now, what's to like about that one? I don't know. Just, I like the anything with alliteration, bro. I'm <laughs> You're actually a cheek. You're actually a cheek talk, man. Honestly. Hey, listen, listen. Let me know in the chat as well. Yeah, for this match in particular, the Bournemouth two nil. What would you give Ange, the Ange meter, as a rating out of ten, if you like, for his tactics, his in-game management, his substitutions, overall, what you thought? Give me a rating out of ten, Tobes. Let me know your number. I'm giving him a strong eight out of ten, man. I'm giving him a strong eight. Um... Picking the same lineup, picking a, uh, the same lineup again for um, continued chemistry, making the subs at the right time, and most importantly, giving the players that we, giving the younger players that um, we already had, the younger or the more experienced players that we had, um, an opportunity to play in a new role and giving them the confidence to do well in that new role and also embedding the new signings in so quick. Like, I have to give him a, a strong rating for me. Eight out of ten, man. Eight out of ten. I think even as well, hooking Richarlison in the second half, like Conte probably would have left him for ninety minutes. Like hooking him in the second half, even though he knows Rich Richie needs to go, but he's looking out for the team's interest, not Richarlison's interest. So yeah, man. Eight out of ten for me. Um, I think that's a fair rating. To be fair, I I would have gone one up even more, and maybe this is just me being excited, but I would have gone nine out of ten personally because I'm thinking away from home, Bournemouth isn't easy exactly. Um. And I felt like the way he just managed the game, the way we kind of attacked from the off. For me, the first half performance alone was very impressive. And then the second half to go up another gear to, to as you said, in those kind of tough moments, see it out, ride it out and still make decisions and get them right. And as you said, for me, that one where a lot of managers, I think, not just Conte, would have said, nah, you know what, Richarlison needs a goal. He needs the confidence. I'm going to keep him out there. That little one-two link-up with uh, Son and Yudogi doesn't happen if Richarlison's on that team right there. So you have to give it credit when it goes right as well. So for me, I would have gone a solid 9 out of 10 personally. I think, listen, you can't give a perfect score, but away from home, after the United game as well, still seeing a way that we're still attacking. And there's not, you know, some, hey, we're going to sit back and see how it is. Forget about it. I love that. So let me see what the chat is saying, man. Um... Eight, 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 eight out of ten. Alfie says ten out of ten. Rotted. Ten out of ten would have been like if it was a five six wash. Yeah, yeah. Right, come on. Chill, it was chill. like a washing. I'm seeing everyone getting goals. Hey, Benton Core coming off the bench. Then it's like, hey, yo, <laughs> trust me. I hope we see a ten this season. But I'm trying to reserve the tens for big big games. You know what I mean? Imagine, imagine mm. we go yeah. on the, the ops across the road, 10 uh, 3 0 at home or something. Oh, Bro, we're devalu we're devaluing what a 10 means. Yeah, if we're man. we're 10, we're man. Devalu we can't devalue the 10s yeah. too much, but ATX agrees with me. He says nine as well. Alistair says eight. Kieran says eight. A lot of people going eights as well. Uh, Minerals says 10 as well. Uh, Philly says eight out of 10. Good work, but still room for, uh, for improvement and ruthlessness. I fully agree. Uh, Montana follows up here with another one. Says, "Ange is like Yo, Redknapp, and Poch in one." I hear it and I don't hear it. I want to let Ange be Ange, but I get, I get what you're getting at. I I, I see shades. He kind of he's got the gruffy voice like a Yo. He's got the old man charm about him like Redknapp, and he's got the kind of tacticalness about with Poch. I get where you're going, but. Let Ange be Ange, bro. Let Ange be bro, Ange. Bro. I need three games. Let's, I don't want to do yeah. comparison. Comparison is the comparison is honestly the thief of joy right now. Yeah. All we can talk about is how the team played last season, how the team is playing this season. Let's just yeah. keep it at that. Yeah. yeah. Uh Tiny says seven out of ten here. Um, cool. Uh Mike says, get me Lorente from Sassel. I've heard this guy's name. I've not really watched him. But... Yeah, same. Uh, a lot of Syria, man. Keep mentioning. And do you know what's funny? I watched the Napoli Sassuolo game yesterday. He really? wouldn't move, bro. He got subbed off and, and was fuming as well. And I was like, yeah. 
Hey, man. Uh, but maybe I just caught a bad game. But um, well, let's move on to kind of talking more individuals. I want to touch on a little more as well. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure you can see in the thumbnail, Mickey van der Ven, uh, Romero, clean sheet. Um, yeah. What did you? What did? What have you made of kind of Van der Ven's first three games, if you like? And what have you been impressed? And not, not give me a rating out of ten, but yeah, what what have you kind of made of his first three games? And compared to initially, what you thought on him when he got signed? Um, he's been better than than what I thought. Like, um, I didn't know much about him. I just heard and read that he was highly rated. Um, I saw clips. I saw the, the bait clip that everyone saw of that recovery run, but I also saw clips of his ball playing, him receiving the ball and being able to ghost past players. Didn't really see much of his defending um, in the air, right? But I did see some ground jewels as well, right? But again, this was very much a, I'm trusting the club on this one, or I have to trust the club on this one. I'm trusting your data-led approach, right? In terms of how I think he's fed, I think he's been really good, Um I feel like, of course, there are going to be harder tests to come um, throughout the season. But for now, I think he's been I think he's been good for Tottenham. I feel like, again, the one repetitive phrase I keep using for all our new signs is he's been a breath of fresh air. He does the basics to a good standard and he is ultra comfortable on the ball. So when you have games like yesterday where the opposition are pressing on him, he's not only able to to make good enough decisions with the ball, but in some cases, he's also able to play out under that pressure and find our midfielders and find our attackers. So, And then in his defensive actions as well, he's been really good. His tracking of the runs are really good. And I think he complements he complements Romero's style really well, where Romero is the aggressor and he's the more passive, passive guy who sort of waits in behind and tries to, to mop up um, anything that gets beyond that mm -hmm. gets beyond Romero. So, yeah, man, I've been, I've been really, um, I've been impressed with his defensive action so far because all of the talk when he was being signed from Spurs fans was how good he was on the ball. But what has really impressed me is how competent he's been off the ball. So, I'm liking that partnership for now, and I hope that it continues to develop. Yeah, honestly, I fully agree with what you said as well. Um, don't even want to regurgitate anything, but. I think compared to like when he first came, as I see, I remember you called me on your stream. You was like, "Hey, Fuad, he's Dutch. Give me the inside scoop." And I said, "Brother, <laughs> I don't know too much about this player. You're, I'm learning everything just as much as you." And all I knew is not even on the ball was he was very quick. That was it. And I was like, "Fair enough. Let's see." Uh, from from the reports I hear, he's very promising. Uh, there was one Bundesliga guy I used to work with as well. I was like, "Yo, what's he like?" He said, "Yo." You've actually got a decent signing. So I said, you know what? Let's see. But I expect more to still come in. And I still want more centre-backs to come in, to be fair. Because I, I still yeah. kind of one injury to either one of those away to kind of being back to a Dyer or Sanchez or Ben Davis. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's the yeah. last thing we want. But in, in terms of what he's done in the first three games, I think you've had good tests. Wissa and Mwembo, very pacey, willing to run in behind, going to test your legs. Marcus Rashford trying to stretch the games had a few moments where he went 1v1 sprints with him and then against Bournemouth Dominic Solanke very physical has has been in decent form over the past year or so so I'm like yo uh, these are the kind of calibers I, in terms of physically is how it's going to test you in the Premier League these three are almost prime examples of what I want to see you up against and to be fair he's handled them solidly and I've been almost like all right seven eight out of ten every single game if you can give me this for the season I'm not asking for domination. I'm not asking for be the best centre-back in the league conversations. I'm not asking for none of that. Just come in, be a steady Eddie. The one thing I can almost have confidence with him more than Sanchez, if you like, because Sanchez was also very quick, very strong, if you like. He didn't have the ball-playing ability. So when I see Van der Ven on the ball, I have confidence that he can find himself out of tight spaces. He can find the right pass in the right moments. But then it's also when you have that pace and that he's not like Sanchez where it's going forward. He wants to almost like a Romero be a front foot. Now he's like, yo, Romero, you do that. As you said, I'm going to compliment you very well. And for me, that's good IQ, bro. So I'm like, listen, so far it's three games in. I've seen you. It's gone well. Now just give me the consistency kind of moving forward. Uh, and, and I think he could be almost like a, a very, very good signing when you look back and just think, you know what? Maybe 40 mil, it weren't too bad because... 
I was looking at like 40 mil. We could have maybe spent this on a tap solver, possibly a Luke, uh, a Lubeka uh, from Leon. Thinking, ah, I don't know too much about this kid. Have we spent too much? But so far, he looks he looks very solid. I can't lie. Yeah, forty. When you look at it nowadays, forty mil is actually the going rate for not even a good centre back, just a half, just a half decent centre back, right? Um, I think uh, obviously Kim Min Jai went for close to fifty million to Bayern. Uh, the Sassi went for more to to Chelsea, if I'm not mistaken. Um, there's other centre backs in 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 the fold as well. Timber just went for Arsenal for just under forty or forty million pounds. Like obviously Timber looks good, right? But the point I'm making is I'm never really gonna um, care about cost as as long as Spurs have done their research on a player and that player is actually good enough. Don't really care. It's the same with Romero. When I saw when we were signing Romero, I didn't care that he cost fifty million. I couldn't give two shits. He just looked good. I said, fine, cool, we'll take him, bring him. And that's all I care about. And I feel like Mickey so far is so good. The only thing I don't like about Mickey is that everyone keeps calling him VDV. And that really irks me. Like, we just got to leave, I... leave some things. Uh, just got to leave some things. Stop calling him VDV, we... right? There's one VDV at Spurs, and that's Rafa van der Vaart, please. I... Call Mickey this, Mickey, is, yeah? this is why I like you, Tobes. This is why I like you, bro. <laughs> because, bro... I've tried my best not to revert to him as VDV. <laughs> I'm like, you know me, Van der Vaart is almost like one of my favorite all time players. I'm like, come on, guys. Let's, <laughs> as you <laughs> said, <laughs> let's leave some things for some guys. You know what I mean? We can give him Mickey. We can give him Super Mick. We can give him, I don't know, whatever you variation right. you want. But let's just leave VDV, please. Right. Because right. Van der Vaart. Is no slouch at our club as well. He came in and played a big part. He gave us some good memories. Listen, we streets won't forget. If you lot try and forget, we will be here to remind you. Trust me. Right. Right. <laughs> I'm not saying in the comments. I ain't saying it. I'm only typing it. Even if, when you type it, type Mickey. Yeah, yeah. type Mickey. Don't type <laughs> VTV, please. Yeah. <laughs> compound V, whatever you like. <laughs> <laughs> hey, compound V might be compound one. Compound V. Know? That's hey. a banger. <laughs> Hey, hey, listen, Mickey, I'm cooking something up for you. Keep them performances up. I'll, I'll cook something up for you like that, bro. Mm. Mm. Hey, listen, I saw this I saw this chat earlier as well. It's a super chat. I'll read this one. Um, Adam Mahmoud says, um, Fuad, please give us a stoppage time update, man. We're starving. Uh, NN says, is stoppage time coming back as well? Guys, we are working on something very special. We are working on something very big. Good more things in time, more than, you can believe. Trust me, more than you can believe. When it happens, all I ask is you are there and you support because, brother, it's going to be big and you will love it as well. Trust me. That you know, every time we've kind of evolved the stoppage time, it's just taken on another level, it's gone bigger. I promise you the same will be happening. So, believe me, very, very soon we will be very back. We'll be announcing something, I hope, within the next week or two. So, Make sure you're following the socials as as it's showing, you know, down here below. Both me and Tapping Tobes, you lot can stay tuned in for that and plenty more other things as well. But listen, let's get on to some more individuals as well. We're kind of halfway through this show as well, just over half an hour in. Guys, I don't know what the likes number is, but more than appreciate if you're enjoying the stream. Throw some likes as well. Subscribe to the channels. They're in the channel uh, description below as well. Support the guys, man. Support the man, them. And uh, Mr. Kumar, I have not missed your super chat as well. As Tob said, that is actually in perfect relation to right at the end of the show. I will be bringing that back up, my brother. So don't worry, trust me. We don't miss anything. Mods as well. Stay on job. I appreciate you. Um, but yes, let's move on to some other individuals because obviously Pedro Porro again. Back-to-back uh, -back starts for him as well. Um what did you make of that? Are you happy with that kind of moving forward? Uh, especially considering the performance as well. I think yeah. good performance yeah. again, and even defensively where we've kind of questioned him. I thought this was an actual very good defensive performance where against United, I thought maybe they kind of tried to target him a few times and, and the team shape got him out of jail. But are you happy to kind of roll with Poro going forward or you you trying to see Mr. Emerson try to slide back in? I'm uh, listen. Um, I, f I I I personally feel like there will always be games where it serves Spurs to play Emerson over Poro um, at some point of the season. But if you're asking me who my first choice 
right back is for the season without question is Pedro Porro without question that was my first choice right back at the start of the summer and that's my first choice right back now sorry in the system where Spurs are trying to keep the ball in a system where Spurs are trying to play higher up the pitch and create as many chances as possible, there is no chance on earth I'm going to prefer a guy who is more defensively sound, yes, but is nowhere near as good with the ball at, at their feet. Sorry, I'm not prioritising the more defensive-minded player over the over the more technically gifted player. Sorry, it's not happening. Uh, Pedro Porro is younger than Emerson. Pedro Porro is someone who can be, who can work, who can work on his game. Listen, he's a poor defender, but in the last two games, he's defended well. And if he can play like he has played in the last two games for most of his Premier League matches, there's not really going to be anyone complaining here. He didn't really put a foot wrong against Bournemouth. And yes, I know we're going to play tougher teams than Bournemouth, but even though he was picked off. Um, a couple of times in the first half against United, I felt like uh, on the whole, he played well against my United and defended well in his 1v1, in his 1v1 actions. Um, he's still learning, similar to Emerson, he's still learning how to play in the inverted role, right? The thing with Pedro Porro is he's going to take more risk with the ball than Emerson, right? It, Emerson playing the inverted role is not the same as Pedro Porro playing the inverted role because Pedro Porro is an instinctively offensive player. So he's... His actions are always with, with the the view in mind of how can I get this ball progressing forward. Whereas Emerson is, Emerson for me is more how can I keep the team stable when I receive the ball. Right. I'm not yeah. saying that Emerson hasn't been hasn't been able to help build up. I think I think Emerson has improved significantly in his contribution to our sort of first phase of play, and I think. He's got to a point now where he can relatively be trusted to play that inverted role in a rotation capacity for Spurs. But for me, Pedro Porro is just better than him, man. Honestly, I'm sorry. He just and, and, and I think that's what it comes down to is better. as a footballer at the end of the day, he is better. And for me, I think when we signed him for 40 million at the time, I was really annoyed that it took kind of the whole month to haggle that five million, whatever it was in the end, only for it to become a loan. Because I said, look, the way he played against us in those two Champions League games actually made me go and watch four or five Porto games, uh, sorry, Sporting Lisbon games. And I remember I even picked up on Diomande after that, where I was like, yo, that's another gem as well. We need to go and scoop. But uh, that's how good I thought he could be is, and people were saying, I remember um, in preseason, oh, him and Destiny, they're wingbacks. I don't think they'll ever be able to become fullbacks. And I was like, no, because defending for me is not rocket science, really and truly. It's just a matter of will. It's just a matter of concentration and using your brain. If you've got the technical ability and the physical capacity, then it's just a matter of coaching. And I've said, you look at Destiny, that boy is six foot two, built like a brick house. You've got Poro, even though he's not the tallest, he's built like a brick house and he's quick. Then it's just a matter of positioning, being in the right places. And I think if we can see these performances consistently, this is the player that I thought we bought, if that makes sense. And yeah. last season, I said, when I was seeing that Leicester game, for example, when I was seeing those crazy games where Sherwood and people were writing him off and saying, oh, he's one of the worst signings. I'm like, you lot are really going to judge a player off, what, a couple of games where he's settling into a system where the team is playing awful. Yeah. For me, I think this is kind of, you're getting a better reflection this season of the Poro that we're, we're going to get, if that makes sense. And, I, and I'm happy that Ange is like, yo, Whoever's got the hot hand, I'll give it to you. And Emerson, thank you for the first day, but your time will come again. And if any, I hope this kind of gives Emerson a um, a bit of motivation, I'll be honest with you, because there were times last year when he was the guy who wasn't in form. Week in, week out, he was starting. And then yeah, I remember yeah. January. You remember the magical January where even we were like, hold up, we got to give him his dues. The Man City game, he worked his way back in. So, listen, it's not completely written off, but... Yeah. Uh, I've got... I'm happy to go with the hot hand, but I want I want to touch on a guy on the other flank as well. And yeah. I know someone someone was just saying it as well. They want to hear destiny talk. Here it is. Yeah, but before we get on destiny, sorry, just my last point is Emerson being a part of the squad now, um, or Emerson being someone who can actually contribute to this team now is a good thing. It may not seem it, but it's a good thing because it means there's actual competition now, right? Like you said, it's always a case of who's got the hot hand. But I feel like there's also a case of styles when make fights. And I feel like this style we're playing is more suited to someone like a Pedro Porro. However, there'll be games like like Brentford away where you you want an Emerson, you want you want that defensive stability. I feel like 
we, for the first time since Carl Walker and, and, and Trippier, we finally have like a right back pairing where we can actually say, yo, like you guys compete with each other. And it's not you're competing with each other to see who's the worst. It's wow. now you're competing with each other to see who's the best, genuinely. And I'm not com- I'm not saying that. Did. No, 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 no. Do you know why I'm laughing here? Because you actually, where I wanted to take the conversation to Destiny is exactly where you took me. And this is why we do this show. There's a green line Kem here. Because for me, that's literally what I was thinking. I'm looking at these two, and I know it's three games, but the, the tools they have, I'm like, long-term, if you can harness your skills, if you can be coached right, I can see these two being like what Kyle Walker and Danny Rose were. Danny Rose and Kyle Walker, when they first came in the team, they were very raw. They needed their harnessing. They needed coaching from Foch. And we saw that in the end. But you know why I'm laughing even more yet is because just last season, this show here, we were talking last summer. And I remember fans were getting so excited with the signing of Jed Spence. And I remember I said, yo, that was the moment you remember I jumped off the transfer window. I said, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, said, yeah, yeah. You, you said he wasn't ready. Wow. You said he wasn't he ready. He is right. not the right back. Lo and behold, he's getting sold this summer. But when he signed and there was Sessegnon on the other side, they said, hmm, could we be cooking the new Rose and Walker? <laughs> Hey, do you know how sick to my stomach that made me, Tobes? Do you know how uh, sick I felt here? So now, the, when we actually on being compared to Rose is is sickening, bro. It's sickening, <laughs> bro. I will not forget. And people, people will act like, oh, it didn't happen. And nah, 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 nah. We was there. We was we was having conversations with people like potential. If they be kicked, nah. This is what real potential looks like. When you look at Destiny, that's what a real, potentially top-class fullback looks like. When you look at Poro, for me, that is what a potential top player looks like. I'm like, yo, please, man. That, for me, is more representative. But let's chat on Destiny a little bit. Um, was you impressed with, with that performance today as well? Continuation from week before? Um, yes, man. I, this kid is just... As I said, I, <laughs> the thing is, it's hard to speak. It's hard to... Um, for me, it's hard to speak about these games because when the, when you're being honest about these players and how they played, you almost don't want to put too much pressure on them and you almost don't want to create a rod for their own back, right? But I don't care, man. This kid, everyone can see it. This kid looks special, bro. Like, he looks special. Like, you just know. Do you get what I'm saying? Physically, he doesn't get bullied. Technically, he's so composed, Right. When you want to play a controlled game, he can keep the ball very controlled in tight spaces, very controlled under pressure. He doesn't panic. He's not erratic off the ball. He doesn't play like a child. He's 20 years old and he plays the game with more maturity than someone like um, like Regulon, who's going to be 26, going 27, right? (laughs) Going forward, he has a burst. You get the ball, he he can just be standing from a standing position. He just said, all right, cool. I just want to go past two players. Bang, I'll just go past two players. And lastly, he's, you know, like, one of the things I really like, and I st- one of the things I, st- I liked and I really like about Kulisewski was when he came into the team, he was able to combine with poor players. He made, he, he was able to combine with, with Doherty. He was able to combine with Emerson. This Destiny guy, it doesn't matter who's playing there. He combines with Sun. He combines with Madison. He combines with 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 um with Perisic. The guy is just a, again another breath of fresh air. This guy, yo, I'm so happy because the I know obviously we're gonna talk about his injury, but Ange actually said he didn't want to come off. Um, apparently he was fine, and he spoke in his press conference. They said, yeah, yeah, he's fine, he's mm-hmm. fine. And I was like, you know that Denzel Washington meme again? You're like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, that's the second time I've had to use that meme gesture because it's just like, how? How are you, God? How are you giving us something so good? So good. You're just taking it away like that. It's just... <laughs> I love this guy, man. I love it. I can't I'm... lie to you because I'm there one minute. Yeah, you you heard me last week on DL where I was like... Yeah, I heard you. Top three. Everything. Top three. Bum, bum, bum. So obviously... After the assist and everything, and that performance, everyone's all at me on Twitter. Yo, Fuad, you was right. YG as well. Big him up as well. Because there was many a times last season where Udinese was playing on a random Sunday morning. And he would at me on Twitter. And he would be like, yo, Fuad, 
eight out of ten performance. So that was my Udogi scout when I went watching. So big him up as well, man. But bro, the kid just looks different, different class. And as you said, bro, I think he can the the potential of what he could become. I've said he's not going to be here for too long at Spurs. We need to enjoy him while we can. And people might, as you said, people might say, yeah, we're, we're creating a rod for his back and look back and say, oh, you're, you're rating him too highly. No, 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 no. I'm not just going off three games this season. Last season, I was watching him as well. You could see the ability. Now I'm seeing him transition into at left back. And now I'm seeing it in a more physical league. Now I'm seeing it in a league where everybody said, OK, maybe he's too young. Maybe he's too raw. And he's adapting this quickly. I'm very, very impressed. And I'm only excited for what more's to come. That's all it is. So listen, I cannot wait for that back four pairing now. It looks solid. As you said, bro, I just hope no injuries come. Uh, I think, as you said, after the game, um, he said there's no there's no issue, basically. So it's a, it's a, it was a, more of a precaution kind of sub off than it was an actual injury. So I hope that back four can actually get like a good three, four months of one game a week, consistency, playing together and just building an understanding, if that makes sense. And then I want to move on to the next part of the pitch because that I feel like they deserve their own kind of segment every week in the show, maybe at this point. But that midfield trio, brother, talk to me, Bosuma, Pape Sar, Madison, which, whichever one you want to start and, you know, gobble, let's go. I think with, with I'll start with Sar to be fair, because I don't actually think Sar played that well. But like what I like about it was the Saar, assist to be fair, yeah. Yeah, what, what, what I like about Sar is like <laughs> He's making an impact and he's always had this quality. Like, as we said last season with Hoybier, right? Or Skip or Benton Core, it was only it was only um Benton Core that you could see probably playing the most advanced of all our midfielders, right? Saab being on the edge of the box and being able to receive the ball there and poke a pass through to, to Madison. It's good play from him, and as it's good play from a guy who is just a solid technician. He's got technical quality, right? And I think that's the again another breath of fresh air. Having three midfielders who are comfortable with the ball, who who want the ball, who can go past players with the ball, who have agility, trickery, and phys- and a good blend of physicality in Basuma and, and Sar's case. Uh, Basuma, what can I say about him, man? Like the, the there's tweets going around for Player of the Month contenders. I think him, him, Ross, uh, him, Rodri. Yeah, him and Rodri for me are standouts. I think Jared Bowen is definitely up there. Um, I'm trying to Raheem Sterling, worthy nomination, but just this Basuma guy, like he just he is just dominating games, and he's not just dominating in spells, he's dominating from start to finish, bro. Um, top, 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 top player, man. Really, really good player. Madison, again, big baller, bro. Like we the ballers. <laughs> 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 Finally, have ballers back in their midfield <laughs> in Basuma and Madison. We have ballers. We yeah. have guys. You know what James Madison is? Yeah, like you know me, James Madison. The way I rate this guy is just like, I swear to God, if he wasn't English, if he wasn't English, he would genuinely he would be regarded as a bigger talent on the world stage because I feel like it's only because he plays for Leicester and he doesn't get starts for England, so it makes people think, hmm, there must be something here to Madison. Nope, there isn't. What you see is what you get. You see a firmly quality midfielder. Like, we're talking, and I don't just mean by quality, by English. I'm talking quality midfielder across all aspects. The guy is an absolute baller. And I don't care if anyone says, oh, no, you're only getting gassed. Nothing to do with Spurs, because I would have said this at Leicester. I was saying this at Leicester. This guy yeah. is a baller. Left foot, right foot, dribbling, passing, playmaking, vision, control. Like, when we talk about pure footballers, he is a pure hooper, bro. Like, that is what you call... <laughs> bro, that is what you call a footballer. Like, you see, yeah. he's not even football. F-U-T-B-O-L. That is football. 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 That's football. the football, like, yeah. <laughs> he's a baller. Bro. No, bro, literally, he's I think baller, you hit the nail on the head and... And people all say, oh, it's early. But I think uh, come into the season, he'll come to be in conversations for signing of the season. When you look at value for money, pound for pound, you look at the the, the first game, was it two assists? The United game, I said um, on stream last week, where for me, he was the needle mover. In that second half, when his game finally woke up, that's when we woke up in the, in the final third and creating chances and actually 
feeding ourselves, if you like. And I think th in this game, you saw his fingerprints all over it again. Man of the match, I think he got in the end. But, bro, this guy, you got to remember a year, two years ago, people were saying, oh, Mount has left him. Grealish has left him. Look where those two are now. Look where he is now. And 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 listen, the, the conversations as the season goes on between those three, that's where I'm kind of keeping my eye on. Because Southgate, you ain't had this brother in the England team for, for however long. You gave him the, damn, nigga, here's some minutes. Finally at the World <laughs> Cup. <laughs> but it was never in the plans. Now with the, with the kind of creative um, burden he's going to have on him at Spurs, the 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 leadership he's going to have to show because he's one of the vice captains on. Well, I've been seeing him talking the talk as well behind the scenes as well. So I'm like, okay, let's see how this goes this season because come come next Euros, I'm trying to see Madison in that England team, maybe in the even starting lineup if Rough. these performances continue. So I, I as I said last season when things got sticky in the second half of the season for Leicester, him Barnes, I saw moments where their kind of heads dropped. They weren't really in it. So when the going gets tough for us in this season, which naturally it will, I want to see how the reaction is then as well. Because it's wicked praising these players when things are going well, but there will be times when things aren't going well and we will look at these players and we will judge them then as well. But yeah, for yeah. right now, I love what I'm seeing. For me, this whole season, I will just be looking at him, Mount, Grealish. Creative-wise, uh, Southgate, talk to me. I'm trying to see something here. If one of these men is a guaranteed starter, hmm. It better be Mount. It better be uh, sorry. It better be Madison. Hey, whoa, whoa. Yeah. don't joke with that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't joke with that one. <laughs> it's crazy. The, 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 the England, the perfect England midfield has been staring at Southgate in the face for years, and he still won't do it. You see Bellingham killing it at Madrid. You see yeah. Declan Rice. You see Declan Rice already. Like that's a very good midfielder, and you're seeing him find his feet so quickly at Arsenal, and you're seeing the same with Madison. It is clearly obvious. That your best midfield is Declan Rice, Drew Bellingham, and James Madison. You have a 10, you have right. an 8, you have a 6. Like I can't lie, if there's one thing that might stop it, is, is this new thing that's been discovered this season. Oh, what? Because <laughs> Real Madrid are playing him as a 10, this basically. Is, right? This is looking spooky, though. I can't lie. <laughs> <laughs> it's looking, it's looking smooth from a goal scoring perspective. Yeah. And but like, come on, let's be real. Like James Madison in the it'll ten, fade off, it'll fade off, it'll fade off. J J James J Madison J is just, just a creative hub. Yeah. Do your job. Hey, listen, <laughs> I said a slip if I've ever heard one. Mount, trust me. Hey, I actually meant to say Madison. I don't know why Mount came out. <laughs> why is That's Mount in your head? Huh? I have no clue. Hey, listen, but. I don't think Mount will do as bad as everybody thinks. I know you're a big time Mount hater, but uh, I'm not even a Mount hater, bro. I actually yeah. think Mount is a good player. I just feel like yeah. he's, I just feel he's not as good as people think he is, and he's, and he, he there's so many, there's so many negative things that he brings with his game that like he's not good enough to be a starter for a top six team. If you said you had Mount as a backup for Bruno Fernandez, I could hear you, but that's an expensive ass backup. When you know as Man United, you need a proper first phase midfielder. And even for England, I've never understood Mount starting. Never. He's yeah. not better than Foden and he's not better than Madison. Yeah, not never. Past international tournament performances, I think, yeah, you've got to kind of earn your spot back, if you like, after yeah. that. But um, I was going to say, on Saar, just quickly as well, I don't know why, yeah, but weirdly, it feels, maybe to just me, but it feels like he's a new signing. Is, is it just me? Because I know we saw him last season, but we only saw it in flashes. Weirdly, we signed him two years ago. We sent him out on loan. Last season, he came back, barely played, got glimpses here and there. But he just feels like a new signing himself. But Suma, I've, I've kind of spoken on it enough, I think. Everybody knows what I think. I think, as, as the comment said earlier, listen, watch watching that fella play is better than sex, in my opinion. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Big old rest of his clawed, man. But that is a legendary line, and I think that just goes perfectly for him. But does Saar feel like a new signing to you almost? Yeah, man. I think Saar and Basuma feel like new signings. That's a bit, that's basically a new midfield. It is yeah. like that's, it's that's basically a new midfield simply because two, two, even though one of the guys wasn't actually at the club last season, two of the guys who were at the club, they barely, they barely played. And when they did play, or better yet, obviously Basuma played more than than than, than Saar, but they weren't really giving the managers trust and they weren't deployed in the best possible positions for them to influence a game of football. So it is a new signing for me. They're basically new signings. They are. And that's why you see the effects that they're having on the team because we didn't have them deployed in these positions last year and we didn't have them deployed with the confidence 
um, from the manager that they have this season. Yeah. Um, just lastly, as well, uh, on kind of the game, I want to touch on the front line. Kuru obviously got his first goal. Do you feel like that's going to be like a, a kickstart for his confidence boost? I thought the game similarly was in and out, had his moments, was a better performance, but just getting that goal, I feel like, can kickstart his confidence. And then obviously the other two, I thought Sun had arguably his best game in, in a while, to be fair. I thought very involved. Um, you could still, I still want to see him moved centrally, even though you could say it was a better performance out wide. I still want to see that move purely because of what we're seeing with Richarlison, where in my eyes, the confidence is not even there at this point. It's just, you're actually almost hanging him out to dry. And as much as he can kick his feet and say, oh, I, I don't get the minutes I deserve, brother, you earn your minutes. Nothing in life is given. So for me right now, you have, you've had three games. If you want to give him the Burnley one, by all means. But you've had one international break to go and earn and make that number nine shirt yours. It's not. It's not happening for you right now. But what what, what do you make of that kind of the front three's performance? Yeah, so I think with Kulisewski, I actually think Kulisewski was poor, man. Um, I didn't really like what he was doing with the ball for a lot of the first half and some of the second half. But um, if you're going to be poor, at least be poor in score. And I've I rate that that he was able to make that run in the second half and get himself off the mark for the season, man. Um, that's what I want to see from Kulisevsky. I want to see him score more goals this season. I want to see him be more goal-hungry this season, right? I have no doubts that he will improve the other aspects of his game because I've seen you do that. I've seen you take on the opponent. I've seen you create chances and stuff like that. That's what you're good at, but... We need to see more of that and we need to see a continuation of your of your goal scoring, right? So one in three this season. Let's try and make it a one in three rate throughout the season. I want to see Kulisevsky get double figures in the league this season. With Son, um, I can't lie, Son is looking good when he's going through the middle. And I was worried about Son playing through the middle. But when he's gone into the middle in both games against United and Bournemouth, he's looked good. He's looked good. He's combining one well with other players. And you, unlike Richarlison, if Sun was the one that was put through on goal um, in the first half, he's scoring. He's scoring. There's no doubt about that. Um, mm -hmm. On Richarlison, I'm literally just typing up a tweet about this now, man. Um, I still <laughs> actually believe... I still actually believe Richarlison... Oh! No, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Let me finish. Let me finish. I still believe I still believe that Richarlison can score goals for Tottenham. But the, the problem with Richarlison isn't just the goal scoring. The problem with Richarlison is you're taking like two, three chances to score. Every other aspect of your game is clunky as hell. Like, he just looks below the level. He just looks lost at sea. And his confidence is on the floor, man. I, honestly, I don't even know where we are with Richarlison. Where do we go with Richarlison? Because I feel like if he doesn't get it together soon, we will see Sun go through the middle. And if reports are meant to be true and Spurs do bring in a wide player, I can easily see... Richarlison being dropped, Sun goes through the middle and we play either a new signing or Solomon or Perisic on the, on the left-hand side, man. I just feel like with Richarlison, like I was flabbergasted at how shit he was on Saturday, man. It was a diabolical performance. Diabolical. And it's, like, it's, it's horrible performance, man. Horrible, horrible. Like there's no more excuses. There's no hiding place, which is why as harsh as it may be, oh, it's only three games and stuff. Bro, you cost 60 million. Sorry, spare me with the with the sub story and stuff. Spare me with the sub story. We just need results now. We mm -hmm. need results. If he doesn't start scoring soon, if he doesn't start giving Spurs more um, outside of scoring soon, he's going to get cribbed and he's going to get sold. My, th my thing is, is if your number nine can't get goals in a team when your team is playing at its best, if you like, or when your team is playing attacking football as well, which should be getting the best out of you. You're getting chances falling to you and you're not taking those chances. I think in both those games, the United game, the Brentford game and in this game, you can all look at moments where you thought that should be the moment you get your goal. That should be the moment you get your goal. That should be the moment you play the pass. And it's yeah. just not coming off. So for me, it's okay. As you said, I'm not here to give charity minutes. And at this point, I'm seeing links to other forwards and things like that where I'm like, all right, something's then going to move. And, and I'm glad we're not doing this thing where we're going to, all right, Let's give him till January just to see if he can get it right. Nope. If you're not going to make the needle move now, we got guys who can. Or we'll get someone who can, if that makes sense. So mm -hmm. I'm happy to keep it pushing and keep it moving. And speaking of which, obviously, we're in the last week of the window. We're almost at the end of the show, ladies and gentlemen, as well. Throw 
some likes into the stream as well before we leave, if you could. would very much appreciate that as well. Get your comments in before we go as well. Um, any yeah, yeah. questions or anything like that you could like as well, we'll try and answer quick fire them at the end as well. Um, but yeah, last week of the window, obviously you've heard the links, I think, to Brennan Johnson is kind of the strongest one I've kind of been linking. One, would you make of that player if he did come to us? Um, and then two, what else do you feel like do you feel like we should be doing in the market in terms of incomings and outgoings? So on Brennan Johnson, I'll be real. Um, I don't think he's good enough for Tottenham. Um, I don't think he's a bad player. I don't mm -hmm. think he's a bad player. Um, I think he's a definitely a solid Premier League player and I can see his uses for several clubs in the league. But when I'm looking at what Spurs are missing in this front in the front line, an expert finisher through the middle, um, we already have that on Sun, but he's just not being played there. And then when I look at what else we're missing, explosive 1v1 specialists out wide, either on the left or the right, who can beat players on, on top of the scoring goals. The only thing I feel like Brennan, well, the things that I feel like Brennan Johnson's good at, I think he's got really good pace, works hard, and I feel like he's got a decent eye for goal. Like he's, he takes a lot of shots, and I've I've seen him put away some decent finishes. But the problem with Brennan Johnson for me is, whenever I've watched him, he's always on the periphery of games. He's yeah. always on the periphery of games. He doesn't, he, he doesn't seem like someone to me who, who can cope well with a two v one, a two v one, um, a two v one defensive shape. Like he doesn't. Yeah. He doesn't seem like someone who's constantly beating others and creating chances for, for his striker. Like, um, he just doesn't seem that guy. Like, and I feel like in those parts of his game, he seems quite limited. And I feel like the stats back it up as well. Um, so when we're saying we're going to sign Brennan Johnson, if you're using him how Kuliseski was deployed on the weekend where he's making runs into the box to try and score, okay, maybe. But... What about the other 80 minutes of the game where he gets the ball on the right-hand side and we need him to make something happen or the left-hand side, we need him to make something happen? I don't yeah. see it. For me, he's mid. I'll, I'll say it. Brennan Johnson, for me, is mid. And, and it's funny because he's he's actually, well, the reports are saying that he's Ange's almost like primary exactly. number one target. So I'm like, listen, I'm all, I'm not one of these people that is of the mindset of if the manager wants him, give him the keys type of thing. Sometimes I'm a little bit like, uh, this is what you have scouts, director of football. Like there's a, there has to be a whole, but if a manager does say, look, that's going to be the one that's going to personally, I don't see what Ange is seeing. And I, and I think there's a difference, a level in kind of, if you're playing for Nottingham Forest, I think who were just trying to survive in the league, getting them eight to 12 goals a season, being very busy in games and things like that. That is kind of reminiscent of, what Richarlison was at Everton. And that was what I was saying. Oh, no, we shouldn't pay 40, 50 million because that is not also going to translate once it has to step up a level. You're going to see the level's not there. And I feel like, honestly, it's copy and paste of Richarlison all over again, where you're looking at a player who's known for being busy, known for his pace, not really contributing goals but when he does it's kind of important goals here and there that helps the team to survive and escape relegation I'm like no 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 for me this is not the kind of signing that is gonna push Richarlison out of the team that's not the type of signing that's gonna make Kulusevsky turn up to training and think for I've really got to step up my levels that's not going to be the one that makes Sun move from the left wing into the central <laughs> area so that's my issue is again is it going to be a player that we're signing almost as squad depth or kind of just let's but let's beef up the front line? And I'm like, no, 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 no. If we're going to sign, like, that's why the gift or ban one, I heard it more because that was like a young player who can, I think, can push Richarlison out. The types of goals he was scoring, he can kind of be a young gem, almost X factor player, if you like. He, I, I feel like he would also be happy to come off the bench more than Brennan Johnson would. You're signing Brennan Johnson for 40, 50 million. I, I think at some point people are going to be like, hey, what, you got a 40, 50 million signing on bench, whether it's him or Richarlison. So I don't know. I think I, I don't think it's a signing for me personally, but I, I, I think we have to get someone in that forward line for sure. Yeah, yeah I, I think with this one, right, it's, it's the age-old, like, oh, 
you ask for a manager to be backed until the manager asks for a, for a sign <laughs> that you don't like, and then you're asking for the manager not to be backed. Hold so, on, wait a minute. <laughs> look, look, exactly, and and I'm I'm so with you on this camp, and I've actually learned. I've learned my lesson from Richarlison, really. I, I, I'd like, listen, you know me, I like Richarlison, but if I could take back that signing, I would take it back because I'm just looking at it now and I just feel like he's an awkward fit no matter where I put you. Yeah, even if you score goals up top, you're still going to have these nasty parts of your game. If I put you at left, you're not going to be able to beat players 1v1. And I have those doubts with Brennan Johnson. I really do. But with Brennan Johnson, if that's the, if that's the, the manager's number one target, right, he, if he said, I want a right foot, I want a, I want a pacey right winger who's right footed and I like the, and I, and I like the look of Brennan Johnson and the, cl the club are willing to do what they can to bring in Brennan Johnson, then listen, in the end of the day, as much as I hate them, I can at least respect the fact that if they're saying, if Andrew's saying that's my number one man, they're going out to get Andrew's number one man. I'll always give a club a little bit of credit for doing that for their for their manager. It's then up to the manager to make it work. If Brennan Johnson comes to the club, and you got to make it work then. you got to make it work. And I think, I think the only positive, the only positive I can see with Brennan Johnson coming to the club... Don't say I'm wrong. No, 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 no. I don't. You think I care about that? If we wanted, if I wanted a homegrown baller, go and get Gibbs White. Go and yeah. get Gibbs White. Harvey yeah. Barnes was there in the summer. There's so many. That homegrown rhetoric, it doesn't wash with me. Like Spurs fans will tell, oh, he's homegrown. There's so many homegrown players out there that can improve Spurs with that money. You chuck in 10, 15 million on top of that 50 million, you're getting Eze. And you're yeah. telling me that he doesn't improve Tottenham? So and, there and you go then. So, so for me, the, the only positive with Brennan Johnson right now is that um, the only positive is that we're talking about a player who could lead, who could come to the club in exchange for players going. Right, I'm hearing that. Oh, Davison Sanchez might be involved in the deal. Brian Hill might be involved in the deal. If this guy's coming in and you're telling me that it helps get some of the deadwood away, it makes the deal more palatable. Right, I don't like the deal, but it makes the deal more palatable. But if it was me, if it was my money, I'm steering clear of Brennan Johnson. But if he comes into the club, and he's got to make it work, simple. Yeah. And a perv Kumar here says, "Love Ange, and I'm all for if the manager wants him, I want him." But Brennan Johnson, nah, we need a proper goal scorer slash finisher. Richie's confidence at an all time low, and that's visible in the second half. Couldn't agree more, mate. As I said to you, I would come back to it. Um, Exotic here says, Victor Roque would be a great signing. I can't lie. Trust me. Those are the types of FM signings, bro. They, they, they ain't happening in real life, man. Oh, but here is a man with a thinking plan. Here is a man who thinks like I think. Ridwan. Ridwan. Bruv. Message me after the show. Yeah, you, you deserve to be a mod just for this comment, bro. Yeah. Uh, uh, Zaspers as well. I saw you asking if you can be a mod as well. Message me on Instagram. We'll make you a mod as well on the channel. Ohio oh, from New Spurs Order tweeted this this morning. And I looked at it and I said, don't make too much sense, bro. You might be dangerous. Don't make too much sense. Homegrown was at bro. the club and he plays bro. right wing. Bro. Can play up front in the middle if you need as well. Like he has what done. What playing at here? What are we playing at? Yeah. Twice last year, like hello, it's staring at you in the face, bro. And me, I've from the day he left this club, bro. Go check my Twitter account. I've been saying, bring him and Noni Madueke, who's now at Chelsea, respectfully. I've been saying, bring them back. They will play a role somewhere. And I honestly, I nah, bun, bun Noni, he's gone to Chelsea. Uh, yeah, he yeah, <laughs> it's way better than Nonny. I'm sorry, way better. I agree. I way fully better. agree. I fully agree. And this is the worst thing. Bakayoko been balling since Madueke left. And hey, now Lang as well, cooking something mean up there as well. And listen, there's another you as well, Isaac Babadi. Soon. Fam, why are you bringing us these Dragon Ball Z players, man? Nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody cares about Babadi from Dragon Ball Z, man. You're, You're like, dumb. You're yeah. dumb. For that. You're dumb. <laughs> Hey, he's like Mavity. If you know, you know. I'm sure why he knows about that one, man. But Level Earth says Marcus Edwards is a baller. Listen, couldn't agree more, man. But listen, that's an hour 10 this week. We always try and keep it to an hour. Or we always end up going a little bit over. Um, yo, Burnley is a upcoming game. 
people then send your predictions in the chat as well let me know what you lot think final game before the international break bro let me uh let me know your score line what do you what are you thinking v burnley company hype come here blood <laughs> i think we're gonna win that game um 2-1 i'm going for a 2-1 win 2-1 win hmm. yeah i think i'm going i think i'm going 2-0 Back to back clean sheets, second game at home. Yeah, I fancy that 2 0. 2 0. I'm going. I can the, the thing is, knowing Spurs, right? I can see us drawing that game. I hate to say it, but I could see us drawing that game. However, I'm gonna go for 2 1. Go hey, for listen, two. we'll talk about draws and losses when we come back from the from the international break. Yeah. Oh till, God, then, God, God. till then, till then, we 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 talk positive. <laughs> <laughs> We just start hurrying. <laughs> we, we hold classes here. I'll hold, uh, uh, don't, don't, don't even worry. But let me read out some of these predictions. ATX says 3 0. Um, United Spurs of America says Fulham 3 1. Uh, Burnley 3 0. Uh, 2 0 clean sheet. Same as me. Uh, Leveler says 1 0 tight win. 4 0 to us, Kieran. 3 0 here. 2 1 Zarspurs. Says he's messaged me on Instagram as well. I will check that after the show. Uh, where's Vedis? says Paul Montes. Uh, I think Ange even said when he signed him, he said he is at the club, but don't expect him to feature much in the first half of the season. It's pretty much going to be adapting period for him. And to be fair, I prefer that. Let him adapt. Let him be out of the limelight. Almost like Star Wars. Come and be a new signing in January or next year, man. We'll see. Um, Exotic here with the final one says 5-0. Listen, people, another week. Another episode, it has come to an end. We appreciate you all as well. And a couple more chats here. Say, Mohamed Kadri says, Happy birthday, my brother Barkola. Fuad Abdullah Abu Kakadani. Happy birthday. Listen, Happy birthday birthday. again, bro. What did you do for your birthday? You just chilled. I didn't do nothing, big man. Once you get past a certain age, you learn in life, you know what? There's no need to spend monies. There's no need yeah. of Mandem's link ups, carnival link up. Gal them link up, no mass, please. I, I prefer peace and quiet mm. nowadays. You know what I'm saying? But appreciate all the messages, appreciate everyone who's joined the show, appreciate everyone who's joined the conversation as well in the chat as well. If you've thrown a like as well, thank you very much. And if you could before you leave and you've enjoyed the stream as well, we would appreciate it. All the links for the socials and the YouTube are in the descriptions as well. So please. Do support us, and we will try and keep this coming. We will be back, I believe, next week on Tobes' channel. So make yeah. sure you're subscribed to that as well. Big Six tonight as well. Don't forget that will, Tobes will be on that as well. So make sure you've got your notifications turned on for that. Uh, SDS, if you haven't watched that, go and check that out from last week's episode. I believe something should be coming out shortly as well. Uh, tomorrow, I believe, actually. No, not even today. But, um, yeah, till then, anyway, peace out, peeps. Peace. Peace.